is another installment in the Passive Solar Greenhouse Project. Admittedly, the scene is a little raw and unfinished right now, but it felt like rather than trying to present something that looks uh, good and tidied up, there are a lot of moving parts and open-ended bits right now that will reveal what my concepts are. And so I thought I'd show it in this stage while a bunch of things are happening concurrently and get some feedback and ideas from folks. I'm going to focus on talking about making the permanent raised beds with climate battery and ground air heat transfer and the start of compost heating system. So let me start with the compost heating system. I found a video a few years ago where a fellow, really interesting character, talked about using a pile of leaves outside of his greenhouse to heat it, and that inspired this design. I'm going to link here to his video. I encourage you to check it out. He's, he's an interesting guy. Um, and so what I've done here is, here we are just to give orientation. This is the southwest corner of the high tunnel, and in this position, uh, I think on his he did on the northern side, but the north side of this is the home. And I also don't want to bank compost directly up against the home. We also have the reality of some pipes and vents that come out of the home, so I don't want to block those and create a fire hazard or any issues. So southwest corner feels like it won't block much sunlight, and very, very simple system here. Uh, and we're, it's a test. We'll see if it's functional or not. But you can see on the inside, I created a simple all locust frame with half inch hardware cloth mounted to it as a mesh. So this is rodent proof, it should be. And the idea is that all late fall, winter, spring, this simple half circle compost ring will be here, hopefully providing ample heat as I laid this up, I took one short section of perforated drain pipe, this four inch stock, which you can see, I'll talk in more detail, that's for the climate battery, but I had a section that was too short to be useful elsewhere, and I ran it starting from the inside of the, high, of the greenhouse down low, and in an arc through the pile and up high, and it raises up and comes back to the mesh on the inside. I'll get a clearer shot but it's right in there with the idea that it can pair into this climate battery and have that hot air drawn off later on. The idea, again, is that in the spring I can remove the screwed-in locust battens that are holding this 2x4 welded wire mesh. Very simple, you know, like standard compost ring construction. I just used what we had around. I wasn't about ready to buy new material to test this concept. Um, what I may have to explore is a second ring around it and packing that gap with dry leaves or loose hay as an insulation layer. Same thing with the top, so that it has a natural tendency to release its heat into the structure rather than bleed out into the atmosphere. But I'll add that only if it proves to need it. I also need to not go too high because that's where we have ventilation for the greenhouse. So we'll keep tabs on that in the weeks to come once it builds up steam, uh, literally and figuratively, and see how it goes. Briefly, while I'm out here, I'm starting to sketch out the permanent raised beds that are on the south side of this. They need a lot more soil. And I'm using these pavers. There was a clean fill dump site that I saw where somebody had dumped a couple dump truck loads of these and they're in perfectly fine shape. So I took them. Uh, I mean, I asked permission and I bought them. Anyway, um, but here they are <laughs> better used to make raised beds than to be underneath a new Marriott hotel or something. Um, but the idea is that they'll create these little sun traps and also create a space where there's no soil directly against the locust frame and most importantly up against the pine painted material that are these sliding glass panels. I want to have an air gap on both the outside and the inside so that heat can accumulate and moisture can be driven out and into the atmosphere. So that's what's happening on the outside. On the inside, and like I said, none of this is finished. It's just in this raw, rough state, it's a good opportunity to show a lot of moving parts at once. There's some symmetry happening here although the pavers on this side are much thicker. And what I'll do is once it's all settled and the soil's finished, anywhere that sun is exposed, uh, I'm going to take charcoal from our wood stove, from making biochar, mix it with some oil, 
and paint all of these jet black so it becomes a really intense thermal absorbing band through here. Now last night I also started the first uh, phase of the climate air or the climate battery and I know that for people that have done thorough research on this or do it by the books or have lots more money and less concern about resource consumption, I'm doing this wrong. Uh, for those that want to use what you've got and within the parameters of what's available, I'm doing this maybe, <laughs> maybe well, we'll see. But what I didn't do is dig down, you know, six feet into the earth and put foam board insulation down deep in the earth and do hundreds of lineal feet of this stock. That's best practice, I guess, but it feels so heavy embodied energy wise. So these are drainage pipes that I had. They were left over from draining another project and I wanted to use them as they were. And so rather than having one long contiguous loop, what I will do is this will be the permanent raised bed of this space. It will be three feet deep, so one monolithic huge volume of soil. The rest is to be designed, but what will happen is I'm going to bury one, two, three, maybe a fourth tube through here, and what I did is I slit down into the soil about six inches to a foot, so I went below grade but not dramatically, and then to promote drainage and deal with ground insulation a bit, at least a nod towards it, I laid a bed of perlite, which I use for potting mix on occasion. I don't love it, but it's it's a rock material. I'm comfortable enough using it. I'll use this one bag of it for this project. That should insulate the tube a bit from the cold ground, not dramatically, but a little, and provide drainage. And then I'm going to backfill with soil and go up one more course with these. It'll end up being two and a half feet deep of bed. I'll go into more detail in a future video on how the tops of these will be worked out, but the plan is to have each, this far one, be able to siphon off the hot air. So I talked about this before, the compost bin outside. Intake tube from the greenhouse comes in here, goes through an arc, comes back out over here, it's buried in there, but I'll take this and pair it right up to that uh, with a fan in line, a little DC computer fan and a solar panel outside to suck the hot air off that tube, draw it down through this, let that heat go into the soil and hopefully wick and bleed into these stones as a thermal mass to heat and dry them out to keep the frame and all that dry. And then hopefully the soil will have soaked up all the moisture, all the heat, and it'll vent out on this side as just cool air to help cycle and spread the air through here. The other tubes will also remain relatively low. It still remains to be seen where they will draw in the hot air and spit out the cool air. Most likely they'll all draw from the compost side, head eastbound and come back up through here. If that doesn't make sense, then just stick with this series. In the next video, once they're more framed out, you'll see them, and they should make more sense. But you can see the trenching that I'm doing, digging through, piling it up, tube one with a, a silt sleeve over it, then two and three and four if I can. And then as I go, as I dig down deep enough and I find little veins of smoother clay, I'm setting that clay aside in these buckets, and we'll return to this. We'll mix this up with a little bit of straw and a whole lot of wool and make a thin insulative cob that we can then use to pack the little gaps. You can see with wood, I'm framing out and getting closer and closer to this being sealed a bit, but there's still obviously some serious gaps. I'm not in a rush to seal all this up because once the tubes are in and I frame out the wooden holding for this raised garden bed, which we'll see in the next video, which will also include a really stout locust run that comes up to the ceiling and supports the ceiling in the middle. Um, 
once that's done, I'm going to fill this whole thing with compost, and I'd like that compost to be able to off-gas for a week or two before we really button up this structure. I don't want it to get stinky or steamy in here. That's enough for now. There's a lot happening with the new compost, the framing of these beds. All of it is using materials I found or had left over, a little bit of investment in the sleeve. But uh, this way the pressure's off to get it absolutely perfect round one. It may very well be in a year or two I make some adjustments, but I'm hoping that this settles into being a good design. What's your thoughts? What are your feedback here? Uh, taking with a grain of salt the reality that I know I'm not doing climate batteries as they say you're supposed to, but within the context of ethics and the materials I have, what are your thoughts? How could this be better? Thanks so much for watching.